Hello everybody and welcome back to another trip report. Today I'm here at Singapore Changi International Airport, also known as the world's best airport. I'm just entering incredible jewel. It's my first time being here since it's properly opened. I briefly came here in 2019 um, during the soft opening. Today I'm going to be flying Singapore Airlines on board their A380 Super Jumbo from here in Singapore over to Sydney in Australia. I, that flight's actually in about 10 hours, so um, I purposely came here with a lot of time knowing that Jewel is an incredible place um, and I think I'm actually going to do a separate video on Jewel itself. But yeah, welcome to Jewel. Um, apparently there's an early check-in area here, so I'm going to go and find that, um, drop my bags and everything and yeah, check out this incredible place. Okay, welcome to Jewel Early Check-In. Just come down this escalator here, and then it's just right here. Check-in's available, I believe, with something like eight or 10 airlines, including Qantas, Singapore Airlines, Qatar, Scoot, and more. So let's go in and check-in. Okay, so I've completed the self early bag drop and check in. I got my boarding pass, bags are dropped. That is an incredible thing. I don't even need to do anything else as far as I'm aware. Um, once regular check ins opened, it was so easy, completely automated. Um, so, yeah, get a massive thumbs up from me. Um, so, I can suggest if you want to see Jewel, use this early check in. Um, thing and I think there's bag storage which I'm going to go and find in a minute. Otherwise, um, I'll see you. I've recorded a couple of clips of this video, but I think I'm going to do a separate one um, just on Jewel. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'll see you in a bit. Alright then, welcome to Jewel Changi once again. It's been about six hours almost, I think, maybe only five hours since um, I last spoke to you guys. Um, since I've been doing a little bit of a vlog, I believe I am going to publish it, so, and it probably will already be out, so check it out in the link in the description, if it is out, that is. It's absolutely wonderful here at Jewel Changi, and I had a great stay here. But I am ready to go to the terminal, I must say. Okay, so I think it's now about time for me to go in here um, to the baggage storage and grab my bags and then maybe grab a drink. And then I think the monorail is what should take us over to Terminal 3, which is where Singapore Airlines flights depart to, I think, anywhere other than the Southeast Asia area. Um, but most certainly just check online um, before you go to Terminal 3, just in case. Terminal 3 is primarily used by Singapore Airlines. It is also used by a couple of other airlines, such as Asiana and Etihad. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm now on level 3. I'm now just going to find the, I think it's the monorail service from here to Terminal 3. There is the link bridge with the monorail sign next to it and um, just back there to Terminal 2. So now let's go over here and presumably we'll find Terminal 3. And in fact, I do see a sign for it. Just went down that long tunnel. Now appears that um, T3 is just here actually. The monorail sign is to get to T1 and T2 and a bus or something to Terminal 4 over that way. But yeah, I guess now we're here at Terminal 3. It's a 
massive terminal here, so let's, I suppose, go ahead and find check-in. I'm still here just over four hours before departure, so my flight's not even on the board yet. Now here at the departure hall, my oh my, there's a lot of check-in desks and it's a stunning terminal here, Terminal 3. Let's go and find check-in. By the way, if my walking camera stabilisation or whatever isn't quite as good, I slightly injured my foot, you could probably say more than slightly, when I was at the hotel yesterday, so um, not quite walking as usual. It does appear to be a bit of a carnival going on here at Terminal 3 that I have seen a few ads for. I also just remembered that I checked in at the early check-in desk, so I actually don't need to go to the check-in desk, even though it does appear to be just past here. Here's the Asiana desk, and I guess most of the desks are probably Singapore Airlines, since that's the main airline that operates in this terminal. Looks like immigration's down here, so let's go down here, go through there, and go through TSA. It, as I suspected, it looks like you only have to do passport control here because Changi has, for some people it might be nice, but for me it's a bit annoying, but their system here is that you do bag scan at the gate, I do believe. Which is annoying for me as a plane spotter because it's kind of hard to get photos of your plane or others as well. So let's go through and go through immigration. After approximately 60 seconds, I'm now through immigration. Massive, beautiful terminal here at Singapore Changi. Lots of designer clothing and all that kind of stuff, which I'm not into personally. But if you do, if you're into it, then it's certainly heaps here for you. Uh, anyways, I think we're gonna go and try and find the Singapore Airlines Lounge, since I should be able to get in with my Velocity Gold status. Welcome to the Singapore Airlines, Chris Fly Gold Lounge, which I have access to thanks to my Velocity Gold status. Okay, now just here at the buffet, looks like there's lots of delicious dumplings and dim sum. Let's have a quick look and we'll start from over here. First up we have coffee dispensers, some cereal and all that kind of stuff. We have some wine here. And then beer dispenser, nice. Soft drinks and stuff like that. Getting some more beers in there. Apple juice, some nuts, chips, cookies, little dessert, mousse cakes, looks delicious. Um, sandwiches and a little bit of fruit. Just here, some stuff for a salad. Rice and laksa gravy. Oh no, sorry, that's laksa noodles. There's condiments, so you can make your own laksa. Fish cake. This stuff, which looks yummy. Some fried rice type thing here. Multi-grain. Delicious um, mushroom bao buns. Seafood siu mai. Seafood siu mai. Hagao. Over here is roasted broccoli soup. And finally, there's some more little buns there. Chicken char siu bao, I think. Overall, it's a lovely Asian selection, but it's not really extensive, but it's perfectly fine for a lounge like this here in Singapore at the Chris Fly Gold Lounge. Just realised I missed some of this stuff at the back here. Alrighty then, I've been here for a solid two and a half hours now. Let's just have another quick look at the food selection. It's basically the same. I tried the uh, siu mai. They're very tasty. 
It's actually better, a lot better than I thought as well. Um, here's some muffins, which I'm going to grab one for dessert in a moment. There's also Wi-Fi here. There's nothing much different, really. However, over here, um, the sign was there, but uh, I don't think they were here earlier. Here's the vanilla cream puffs. There's still some more mango mousse. All the same stuff, really. Um, and here's the options on the coffee machine, by the way. So, yeah. Uh, now let's go and have a look at the shower room. Okay, welcome to the Seal Party Lines shower room here at the Crystal Eye Gold Lounge. It's the first one on the left. It's a bit smelly in here. I think someone just got out of it. Um, so you have this shower here. It's not actually very fancy. I don't know if there's a more fancy one just around the corner. Um, but this is all I have time to check out today. Uh, so you have just regular shampoo, no particular brand. You have a nice shower head, which is adjustable. It's no rain shower though. Then over here you have a nice sink, tissues. It's also, it's pretty spacious and relatively clean. Some cups, a mirror, and also a hairdryer. So yeah, that's about it for the shower room here. This looks like a robe as well, which is nice. Overall, it's a solid shower room, but it's nothing special from what I've seen for international shower rooms. Anyways, let's go um, out, because I've got to head to the gate soon if I want to do some plane spotting, that is. Now about time to leave the Chris Fly Gold Lounge. I didn't realise until I checked my boarding pass, but it actually takes uh, apparently an hour for them to board the A380, so I don't have as long as I thought. Uh, so let's go and find the gate and do a little bit of plane spotting, hopefully. Uh, we do have to go through bag scanning security and all that at the gate. Overall, the Chris Flyer Gold Lounge was very, very good. I give it a big thumbs up. The food was very nice. It was very peaceful, relaxing, lots of places to charge, um, and the staff were very friendly. It's not, it's pretty big, and the shower rooms are solid. The main, they couldn't improve on much, but just maybe the shower rooms a little bit, though they're still really nice for the um, lesser of the luxury lounges here in Singapore. Anyways, I believe the A gates are back that way and C and B are just down here, so let's go and find our gate. By the way, just entering this other section of Changi T3. So, so many places to eat, drink and buy lots of expensive clothing and watches and everything here. And of course, there's your classic Burger King. On my way to the gate, just coming over here to have a quick look at this A350. For those of you who aren't familiar with Singapore Airlines, the A350 is the backbone of their fleet with approximately 60 in service. They also have approximately 20 777s, uh, I believe 10 or so A380s in service and a few more in storage, and I think about almost 15 787 10 Dreamliners with more to come. There's also one or two more A330s on order. Singapore Airlines fleet has actually gone through quite a big um, renewal recently with their average fleet age I believe being I think under 10 years. After continuing going the same way I've found my way to the B5 to B10 gates and just over there's B1 to B4. However, I think I see our plane for today and I have no idea what the Rojo is. We're now here at the gates area here at Singapore Changi. I can still see our plane there, that's our gate lounge. So you have to go through the bag security and scanners and everything before you enter the gate lounge and then I believe you cannot leave. We'll head through in just a second since unfortunately I don't think there's a whole lot of plane spotting to be done around here. Okay, I'm now just um, inside the gate area here at Singapore Changi's Gate B5. Here's my plane for today. This is 9 Victor, Sierra Kilo Victor. It's a January 2019 built and delivered. Airbus A380-800, delivered brand new to Singapore Airlines. Also, just another note, this aircraft 
is configured with six first class suites, 78 business class seats, 44 premium economy and 343 regular economy seats. I don't believe that this is one of the aircraft that was originally configured with the upper deck economy class as there's no note or record as far as I can find online of it being reconfigured. However, some of the older A380s did originally have upper deck business, sorry, upper deck economy class, but Singapore Airlines refurbished all their aircraft um, to fix that during COVID. Also, here's an A350 taxi in. Now time to board. Thanks to Velocity Gold status, I do get to board with the Star Alliance Gold passengers. I'm very excited to board the jumbo jet that is the A380. Lower deck, that's us. Haven't been on a flight where there's been multiple jet bridges for a long time. Hello. Hello. All right. For you, the cross into your right, the other side. Yeah? Thank you very much. Welcome aboard the Singapore Airlines A380. It, premium economy appears to be in a 242 layout with 44 seats. And here's economy in a 343 layout. This is absolutely surreal and incredible to be on board. My seat for today is 44K on the left side of the aircraft when boarding from the front. And it's one of the first rows here in economy class. These windows are absolutely massive and we have a fantastic view of the engines. Welcome on board the Singapore Airlines Airbus A380-800, seat 44K. Now let's go through the seat features. This, first off, this window, the window's slightly bigger than usual, but this thing around the outside is really absolutely massive. And I'm not sure how necessary it is, but it does, I'm not complaining. The legroom on this aircraft is a pretty solid, I believe it's 81 to 84 centimetres or 32 to 33 inches. It feels a little bit more than 81 centimetres or 32 inches, but I'm not too sure. Either way, it's very nice, keeping in mind I'm approximately five foot. There's a little, very mini seat back pocket here. In here's the headphones that I grabbed upon boarding. Just here is a seat back pocket. Um, for your personal items, there's actually two. Just here you have a seat back pocket for the literature, such as the Chris shop. Safety information, that looks old. A sick bag and a Wi-Fi information card. We'll go through some, maybe the magazine a bit later. And also just here, here you have the tray table, which you can pull down like this. You, it's foldable um, and it's also a very solid size. It's actually a mirror on this side, which is something I've never seen before. It's stiff and dirty though, but it's there nonetheless. And there's a little cup slot here, so if you want to have it half opened, then you can if you just want a drink or something. It's mm, mostly clean, excusing a couple little bits. But yeah, the tray table is very nice, and as I said, it's foldable, which is always nice. On the side here, you have a USB outlet, as well as the headphone jack, and some little buttons that do random stuff on the side. There's a cup holder here as well, if you don't want to have anything of the tray table sort out. Looks very nice. There's this thing here, which doesn't seem to do anything and also this little very mini storage compartment that was actually out like that when I bought it so I'm not sure why that's the case. There we go. I'm not sure that it's meant to be like that but whatever. Here's the entertainment screen. It's a very nice size and it's adjustable like so, very nicely actually. We'll go through it in detail a bit more later. Um, very nice view as I said earlier and as you can see the recline is also Pretty solid, but it's nothing crazy. The seat back padding is also pretty okay. Um, however, it's not double seat back padding like the Qantas A330-300 that also operates this route. By the way, I have flown on the Qantas A380 a very long time ago in 2019. 
you can check out my trip report there. Um, however, warning, it's not up to my usual standard. I filmed it with an old camera. So please don't think that that's just normal quality. A video like this is the normal quality. Here's the seat back headrest, which you can adjust six ways. It goes up a lot and down a lot for someone short like me. And you can adjust both sides. It's also very comfy. Um, it's not the biggest, but it certainly does the job and it feels very nice. Overall, it feels like a very wide seat. Um, it's super comfy and I'm happy with the seat features. Oh, and of course, can't forget, the universal power socket, which is just down here. I much prefer it being there to down there. I mean, honestly, um, I doubt that anybody likes being down there. But yeah, overall, it's a very, very nice seat. And I'm super happy with it here on board the Singapore Airlines A380. I also completely forgot, I do apologise, the coat hook on the side of each seat here. It's my pleasure welcome you aboard after NSQ 231, Bath City. With me the flight deck today is your co-pilot senior first officer, Nick Tang. The cabin, your flight managers, Mr. Manish, who together with my crew will make sure that uh, you'll be well looked after for the flight. Flight time for us today is 6 hours and 55 minutes. And if you'd like to monitor the progress of the flight, you can do so on the flight path channel of your new flight entertainment system. Otherwise, uh, we do have a forecast of some light to moderate uh, turbulence just about halfway through the flight. So, for your safety, please do have your seatbelts fastened when you are seated. And also, please uh, do follow the safety instructions of the mic crew at all times. Uh, do you have this of our uh, arrival uh, before our arrival into Sydney of the weather and uh, arrival time? In the meantime, I do wish you a pleasant flight and thank you for choosing Singapore Airlines. That was interesting. So apparently, we have to wait about 10 minutes since we can't really arrive all too early into Sydney. It sounds like if we arrive much more than 10 15 minutes early, then Mm, there's not going to be a gate for us. Anyways, I thought I might as well just show you the pillow and blanket that was waiting on my pillow while we wait. Here's the pillow. It's a very nice and soft fabric, and it's very soft. So, so that's very nice. It's also a pretty good size. Thankfully, the headrest is comfy as well. And just here's the blanket, which looks very nice. We'll have a look at in a bit more detail a bit later but it looks like it's a pretty nice size and pretty nice and fluffy i'm glad to see that they do have a pillow and blanket but of course i would expect it from a five-star airline like singapore airlines at this time i draw your attention to the safety video which i'll be showing you using an evacuation slide, remove any high-heeled shoes and be sure to leave everything behind. To put on your life vest, remove it from the plastic cover and flip it over your head. Life vests are located under or between your seats. Thank you for your 
Thank you for your attention. Now time for taxi. Now time for takeoff. Approximately half an hour late at 1.15 a.m. local time. So I can notice that we are climbing a little bit slower than we would be if we were on, say, an A350 or a Bogues and Main 7. It's actually surprisingly quiet compared to what I thought it would be. It's comparable to that of an A350, actually. Singapore. Just reclined and so was the person in front of me. The very, very friendly crew have just come around. We're now just coming around to ask if we want some water. By the way, there's no post-takeoff meal service. I'm not sure if corner software. Very nice. Yeah, as I was saying, Singapore Airlines only offer one meal being breakfast so I believe post takeoff all we really get is water and just getting water and then a pre-learning meal is probably the least I'd expect from an airline like Singapore Airlines it's certainly something that they could improve on even if they just offered a little packet of nuts or something after takeoff that would be nice either way though crew are absolutely lovely they asked us um, to kindly put these down just so it doesn't disturb our sleep when the sun rises in a few hours so that's very nice and yeah I think I'm actually just going to go through this now so that I can have a bit of a nap soon so if we head to home 
I've been trying to get it to work on my device, and by the way, I did check out the Wi-Fi options. I think it's 15 USD for the full flight. I can't remember what the others were. I think it might have been $9 for three hours, $6 for one hour or something. There's apparently a complimentary access for Chris Fly members. I am a member, however, I entered my velocity frequent fly details because then I could get large access. So. So unfortunately I don't have access to that, but anyways, luckily there's an incredible entertainment system here from what I've seen so far. So let's have a quick look at the movies. So if I go to Hollywood Favourites, just in Hollywood Favourites alone, there's a whopping 142 movies. I don't know how many other airlines have, but I recently flew Cathay Pacific, and this most certainly it beats that from what I've seen. Even though Cathay Pacific is very good, here's all of the Hollywood movies, the Hollywood favourites, I don't know what, how many there are in general. There we go, but as you can see there is so many movies ranging from Moana to Titanic, so there's, you certainly shouldn't get bored for a seven hour flight. go to Hollywood new releases. There's 68 as well. I'm sure some of them are included in the Hollywood favourites. They have a little bit of everything but and a lot of Hollywood movies that's for sure. Here's some Bollywood movies as well. There's 21 of them. And there's a few more in different languages but what I can most certainly say is probably approximately 200 movies which across all languages and everything which I must say is actually really really good so I'm very impressed with the movie selection here on board um, the Chris World Entertainment System unfortunately what I'm not quite as impressed with is the other stuff the flight map's good which I, I'll show you in a minute however like you can't view the menu or play any games on here you have to do that on your own device and I'm struggling to get that to work I think it'd be nice if you were able to do it on both devices as you can see this is powered by Panasonic also you can't see me now but I noticed instead of non-smoking signs they have no phone signs which is interesting so here's the map it is it actually appears not to be interactive. Oh no, this is just autoplay. Yes, okay, as I would have expected from a new plane like this, there, it is interactive, and you can see here our route. Apparently we're expecting a little bit of turbulence while flying up here. There is a little bit of a tropical cyclone going on in North WA at the moment, and that is causing some hot, strong winds obviously in that area, and even um, extending over to Eastern Australia, including Sydney. If you go on the side here, you can also look mid-flight. There's a couple other viewing options. Window seat. Overall, I'd say it's a very nice entertainment system from Singapore Airlines. The movie selection is incredible and the map is pretty good. The other systems aren't my favourite, but it most certainly does the job. Let's actually have a look at some TV movies. There's actually quite a few different TV series as well. So you certainly shouldn't get bored of movies and TV shows to watch. And there's music of course as well. But yeah, I do wish that they had games on here. Overall, it's a very nice entertainment system from Singapore Airlines. Some parts are really, really good and some parts certainly could be improved on a little bit. But overall, it's a nice entertainment system. I do believe we're now climbing through 36,000 feet. A few very minor bumps. Now just going to visit the loo.
the crew are just now setting up the snack bar, which is very nice to see considering there's no post takeoff meal. Here at the snack bar, there's lots of different things like Doritos, looks like an Asian snack, cranberry thingos, Kit Kats, regular bites, usually bars, and much more. There's even blueberry muffins and red bee buns. The crew have done a very good job at setting this up quickly, and I'm very, very pleased with the selection here. Well, snacks in hand. I think it's now about time for the Singapore Airlines A380 Lure Review. There's a very nice sized basin here. You should easily be able to fit your hand in. So disposal bin, some cups, soap, whatever this is. Oh, the lights just came on. It's this nice wooden panelling. It's spacious enough. Funnily enough, though, it's um, I would have actually thought the A380 would be more spacious than the um. Triple seven or the A three thirty, but if anything, it's ever so slightly smaller. But uh, it's th by the way, this is the centre galley room, one of them anyway. So we'll air nozzle here, some more amenities in there, and yeah, and of course a nice big coat hook. Overall, it's a pretty solid loo. Anyways, I think it's about time to head back to the seat, have the snacks, and then have a nice little rest. Okay, well then, good morning, everybody from the skies above Uluru. Just flying, as I said, over Uluru area at the moment. We have a very strong tailwind of about 85 knots. Um, so ever since we got onto Australian airspace um, due to the tropical cyclone and just regular wind and stuff, um, but we do have a very strong tailwind, which is good because it means we get into Sydney pretty early. And my oh my, what a magnificent view to wake up to out there. I mean, I saw it on the ground at Changi, but it's just completely different seeing it during the day. I've noticed the cabin crew have come around um, and served the vegetarian or special meals or something like that. Um, but yeah, we're still actually, I think, just over two hours out of Sydney. As you can see here, our cruising altitude is 39,000 feet. The cabin crew have been attentive throughout the night. I kind of got a bit of on and off sleep for the first uh, kind of two hours after I got those snacks and everything and then I've just been relaxing and stuff since. But they've been nice. I think they came around with water once or twice. I assume the snack bar's still at the back for the moment. And yeah, I haven't been able to get the entertainment working on my phone, however. But other than that, it has been a very nice and enjoyable flight. The seat is very comfortable. Um, no real issues there and I've managed to keep everything very nicely charged. In conclusion, it's not, it's a pretty good economy class product uh, to sleep in, and I certainly would recommend it. But let's see what happens with the food, because I'm looking forward to that. I'm pretty hungry considering we didn't get dinner. Okay, the very friendly cabin crew just came around, I think in pairs, and that to give out the breakfast service. Also, they're asking everyone to put their seat up right for the meal service, but um, well organised, the crew are. Um, the two options for today's flight were the um, chicken patty and scrambled eggs, or the Singapore fried carrot cake, which sounds a bit strange um, from what I've seen online, but that's what I have, and I'm going to try it out in a minute. It was served alongside a bread roll, which is 
probably was probably warm half an hour ago since this is warm, but the rest isn't very warm. There's salted butter, slightly salted. And there's also a strawberry yogurt. This was also served alongside the option of tea, coffee, apple juice, orange juice, and water. And there's also, I think, cream or something like that down there. Overall, I'd say it's a very average breakfast service. I'll let you know how it tastes, but in terms of quantity, it's the minimum I'd expect, to be honest, from uh, Singapore Airlines here. I would have liked a little bit of fruit or something, but it is like this. Let's see how it tastes. Well, here is the Singapore fried carrot cake. Just had a few um, spoonfuls, I should say forkfuls, metal, metal cutlery by the way. Very good. It's about the only thing that's good about this though. Um, it's, I don't know in what world this is a carrot cake. I have not tasted or seen any carrot whatsoever. So I'm not sure what that's about. I think this is shrimp, potato, and then like an eggy rice thing. I'm not a big seafood person. I mean, it's edible for me, but I'm not, I'm gonna choose not to have much more of it. Um, some people might really like it. I will say that some people might really like it because um, I think it does have potential um, to be really nice if people, if certain people would like it. However, I don't know if this is just a Singapore Airlines thing or if this is just a Singapore special dish, but for people who don't know what it is, <laughs> better be, um, yeah, don't expect an actual carrot cake like what you'd get in Australia or somewhere, like a literal carrot cake. Because um, I don't know what part about this is cake. And I don't see any carrots, so yeah, it doesn't make much sense. Anyways, um, we'll try out the yogurt and the bread in just a moment. Okay, I finished my meal, if you can call it that. Um, I got rid of the uh, carrot cake. It was, it, I really didn't like it. It smelled quite bad. Um, for someone who doesn't like shrimp. Um, Yogurt's quite sweet, but it's nice enough. And the bread roll's also quite sweet, but it's also nice enough. The apple juice is good, and let me try the tea. The tea does the job. It's not too bad, actually. Overall, though, I can't, I can't say I'm very impressed with Singapore Airlines for the breakfast service, or just the catering. I do wish that they would serve, like, some nuts or something or a packet of chips or something like you know I know you can get some stuff like that from the snack bar but it'd be nice if they brought it to you um, after takeoff and I don't know if we're gonna get dessert or anything for breakfast but I would have really appreciated some fruit or something and I'm not sure what kind of a breakfast meal that is to be completely honest it's up to opinion. As I said, I think some people would like it. But for me, I wasn't particularly impressed by the breakfast service, which is a shame since the rest of my Singapore Airlines experience has been very lovely. Cabin crew just came around to offer duty-free shopping. Forecast of uh, windy conditions later in the afternoon. 
Cabin crew are now coming around to start preparing the cabin for landing as we have now started our descent into Sydney Kingsford Smith International Airport. The seatbelt sign has now been turned on. I asked the crew if I was able to go upstairs after landing. Have a look. So should be able to do that after we land. So very kind of them and told me that I should be able to do that just quickly. Must not be used from now until the aircraft is parked at the terminal. But ladies and gentlemen, from Yaman crew, it's been our pleasure serving you on this flight today. And we thank you for choosing your flight in the four lines. And from cabin crew to your stations in five minutes. With this incredible engine view in the background, we're now starting our beautiful but a bit cloudy approach into Sydney King Smith International Airport. I'm not too sure what runway we're landing on. It would seem like potentially um, three, two left. I'm just going to um, do most of the conclusion for today's trip report because on arrival I have to go through customs and stuff and of course um, check out the upper deck hopefully. My journey today started off at Singapore Changi International Airport. I very easily spent six hours at Jaw. I didn't get bored though I feel like I would have started to. Um, if I stayed much longer. It's certainly a very nice place to go and I can highly recommend going there quite early for that. And the early check-in facilities there are absolutely great. They do charge you like basically $10 for a standard sized bag um, to hold it for up to 24 hours, which is okay. It would have been nice if it was free, but like, you can't really expect that. Like, they gotta make money somehow. And then getting from Jewel to Terminal 3 was really easy. We just walked down the bridge, which was a little bit of a long walk, but it was pretty easy. Once we were in there, I almost, I thought for a second that we had to go and check in, but then I remembered that we'd already done all of the check-in at Jewel. So just headed straight through security, which took about 60 seconds. And then we headed to the Singapore Airlines lounge, the Crystal Gold Lounge, which I had access to thanks to my Velocity Gold status. It was a very nice lounge, um, and it overall had a very nice selection of food. And basically, just as I mentioned earlier, it was a really good lounge. Um, I'm sure there's better in the world, but it was very impressive nonetheless. Boarding process was not too bad. You have to go through the bag scanning at Changi, which I did know. Um, however, it is a little bit annoying. But the boarding was actually pretty quick, I think, considering it was an A380. And we just had to wait 50 minutes on the ground because we couldn't arrive here in Sydney too early. We had a very, very strong tailwind of up to, we had a tailwind of up to 130 knots, which is pretty crazy. It's, I mean, it's not like any, it's not really cyclone winds, at least for that high in the sky, but it's just very, very strong. So that decreased the flight time by a little bit. And the onboard service, the seat is absolutely amazing. It, I mean, there's a couple very small areas where it could be improved upon, but overall it's a fabulous seat and I can't really complain at all about it. The crew have been absolutely lovely and the snack bar at the back of the start of the flight was nice. However, as I mentioned, I would have appreciated a proper drink service and maybe a little snack. As for breakfast, I was actually quite disappointed with it. It was not tasty at all, um, for me at least, as I mentioned earlier. And yeah, I would have appreciated a little bit of fruit or something, but it does the job, I suppose. However, that's the main, that's probably my only complaint really about my flight here on board Singapore Airlines. Also, this map is pretty cool. It actually shows the plane turning as well. Overall, I can highly recommend Singapore Airlines if I say 380 on this route and basically probably every other route that they do it. I'm not exactly sure what the prices start from, but it would be somewhere in the 600s, I believe, for a one-way fare from Singapore to Sydney. And Qantas is likely only 10 or $20 cheaper, actually, 
Cabin crew to your landing stations. And British Airways also operates this route, um, continuing on from London. And I believe it's also a similar price to Singapore Airlines. They operate the 777 and I honestly have no idea what their product's like on board. But I do have a bit of an idea of what it's like on Qantas. And if you can get the A380 or 33300 or Dreamliner, basically just anything other than the A33200, then Qantas is a good option too if you have status with them. But if you have status with Star Alliance or Virgin Australia, then Singapore Airlines is awesome. Singapore Airlines is also a great option. As for low cost options, both Scoot and Jetstar fly this route for approximately 210 Australian dollars. That's my conclusion for today's trip report. Overall, I had a great flight on board Singapore Airlines. A few, the catering was the main thing I reckon they could improve. Otherwise, the rest of the stuff, I would probably agree that it's five star. But overall, I am not decided on whether it, I think it deserves a, the five star airline status or not. Anyways, enjoy the approach and landing into Sydney Kingston Smith International Airport. It's pretty windy on approach here into Sydney. I think wind's still pretty high and I'm, there might be a crosswind, I'm not too sure. Welcome to Sydney. Well, most of you probably know, but there's actually only one reverse thrust on each side. That being, I believe, engine two and three are the only ones that have reverse thrust. One and four don't. Which is something pretty unique to the A380, I do believe. Welcome to Seattle, Nicola, Jenner. to this out.
correct at the top or on top of Arabic. Just realised this seat thing came off. Let me see if I can fix that. There we go. But here's the headrest. The crew is now taking me to the upper deck. It was extra, it was uh, just now, last minute. Oh. So, uh, I'm going to have to ask you to stop filming once you get to Thank you so much, much appreciated. Bye bye. Okay, we're boarding or deboarding through the upper jet bridge. Wow. Looks weird to see a plane from this height. Alrighty then, walking down from the jet bridge. Don't do that very often. I think, I suppose, now's a pretty good time to conclude today's trip report. By the way, let me know if you want to see me. Maybe I might be able to somehow get to on the A380's business class at some point. If you really want me to get on the A380 business class, let me know and I'll see what I can do. But beautiful Vietnam Airlines out there too. But anyways, first of all, I'd like to thank you for watching today's video. A like and subscription if you enjoyed would be very much appreciated, but it's not necessary nor expected. Also, make sure to check out my website if you like at aviation763.com for information about comic flights and easier navigation to certain airlines through reports. Also, check out my Instagram. I did some live updates on today's flights there at aviation763 underscore. Last but most certainly not least, thank you to all my incredible Patreons who helped to make these videos possible. Support is so, so much appreciated, and the names will be on screen now. Once again, thank you all for watching. I hope you have an amazing day, and I look forward to hopefully seeing you in my next one.